I've got a ordeal here to try to do something with. This window was put in who knows when, a long time ago, and they cut everything out up against the fireplace, and there's not anything actually holding that up there. You can see the big gap there from the ends of the log to the fireplace, and the termites have been in this corner pretty severely. And this window pretty much is beyond any repair. So what we've offered to do is take the window out. I will fill in, it'll be kind of a laminate type thing that I'll be doing. I'll put a laminated face on the outside and fill from here over. And I've got a treated four before to put here, going up to that log right there that goes all the way across. And it'll go down to the, to the footing and I'll be able to hook to that with the outside faces all the way down. And these logs here are just in here. There's nothing holding them up except the notch in the corner. And I've got to shim them up, raise them some. I can't raise them a whole lot because the notch itself has them locked. So I'll do what I can with it. It's gonna be a pretty tough fix job. I think we can do something here to save this corner. The ideal thing would be to take these logs out and replace them, but with the budget that I'm on, that would be a little more than what we can do. So I'm doing the next best thing. I realize this is not the perfect thing to do here, but I'm doing the best I can with, the, with what I have to work with. And hopefully when I get this back together, it won't be as such a bad looking thing. This is the outside. See the window is leaning way out at the top. And some of these logs, it's not a whole lot left. The heart, which is still good and solid, even though the termites has been there, the heart is still solid, so I can attach the faces to that. But this was done a long, long time ago. You can see the square nails that they used. That takes it on back a good, good many years, back into the 1800s. Now somebody has made this and put over there. You can see there's just regular Phillips drywall screws holding that to those boards together. Well, I've got the old window out. They did hew a small timber and put in there, but it's only held with one, looks like about a 20 penny nail that went into this log right here. And I'm guessing that this timber upright actually sat here on top of this log. At one time, there's a square nail right there that was probably driven in here and then when this slipped over it, it bent the nail. So I'm gonna put an upright in there all the way to the, to the footing. And put some blocking in here to hold this log up, which still has pieces of wood in the chicken gap here, which is holding this log up. But this log is slipped out uh, close to three inches and the fireplace was built right up against it. So I can't do anything with that. But I'm gonna do something similar to what they did. I'm gonna let my post timber go all the way up against that log there. This is what I've got to deal with from the outside. I've just cut some big thick wedges just to hold those short pieces up to keep them from falling out or just settling down. You can see there's been some termites in there. This piece here goes plumb back in. I'm not sure how far back in there it goes. I'll just have to cut that off as close as I can. And maybe I can get it out of there. I don't know how far in there it goes. We'll finish tearing this part here out and see what we can get started on going back with. I've been working some pieces out to do the repair on the corner beside the fireplace where I'm taking the window out. Part of the logs is still pretty solid. And so I'm going to attach some faces on the inside and the outside and put an upright post up against the fireplace that will go all the way down to the footing and help support all of this. These are some pieces, actually it's pine, that I had left over and I milled them down to five inches, which the logs on the cabin, the old cabin, are they run anywhere from five to five and a half inches in, the, in thickness. And so I milled all of these at five inches. So I'll rip these down to about nine inches wide. The faces are all nine inches wide. They came off of some four by nines that were seasoned out really well. 
I'm cutting these just a little over five feet. Actually, they're about five foot three in the length. And this one here, you can see I've I've had to brush it quite a bit with a chainsaw. Had a pretty good hump in it, and so I I took that out, and I'll be able to score it and hew it, and then mill it with the, the Alaskan mill on my, my big chainsaw. Spraying these with water to soften it a little bit to make it easier to hew with the foot ads. This stuff is very seasoned and some of it doesn't want to hew very good. I've got my timber set on an incline to where when I'm going down it with the mill, I'll be going downhill, which makes it a little easier to cut. I can probably get three faces out of this. been working on doing this repair I've got about all of them taken care of on the outside except for that little short one at the top I've got a four by four post up against the fireplace here and I've got it anchored in on the log up above there pretty good and it goes all the way down down to the footing and I've got these logs here on the bottom the bottom two logs that were that went underneath the window I've got them anchored into the the four before post and I may have to go ahead and just put another face on this these two bottom logs so this all kind of blends in together I'll take you inside so you can see kind of what I'm doing here. I've got these pine logs that are timbers that I made that are five inches thick. It's just kind of an average of the thickness of the old logs. And I'll have to do some fill in and fixing on them. And you can see the four before there. It's all the way down. That's what I showed you on the outside. And up to the, the one log that goes all the way across. And I'm screwing the ends of the logs together the best I can with some long torque screws into the ends and just raising this up kind of as an average. And on the outside, I can shape the faces, kind of blend that in to the natural shape of the logs instead of just a straight line across there. I've had to put big wedges in just to hold these little short pieces up. You can see they're in pretty sad shape as far as the outside surface. The insides of them are pretty solid. I know when I'm running a torque screw in, it takes a little effort on my impact driver. Once I get this last one on, which is goes in here across and get the face on, I'll, uh, I'll come on the inside and start putting faces on the inside. I'm actually having to just do this by sight, get it in there to see kind of how it looks. Then I'll go outside and look at it. I know 
this log right here is tilted down a little bit, but the face will be running kind of more straight across, and I'll be able to shape those faces to where it look like a natural top and bottom edge. But I'll go on the outside and sight that and see what it looks like face on the outside. I might have to raise it up a little bit more. I know I'm not going to be able to line up with these logs here, but once I get these in here, I'll put a, a board all the way down over the ends of them because uh, this there's been so much settling on this cabin. It was so out of kilter, just doing the best that I can with it. So I'll be able to, to break it up right here with an upright piece. This log here, I may have showed you the fireplace is built right up against it and it's in and I can't go out with it. The fireplace has already got that established. I've got that screwed in there. I thought I had the camera on, but I didn't. But I've measured the face. I'm ready to cut it and then I'll attach it to what's left of that little log there. It's, that part is actually the heart and it's, it's really, really solid.